Alrighty, game makers. Let's see where we last left off. Um, I made a quick little if save file ID is greater than zero. So that way it doesn't accidentally save to our database the, um, the global data, which is the, uh, just as a recap, the global data is uh, when you go into like the load screen, you see the time played and you know the characters in your party and that kind of stuff so this save file id greater than zero is just kind of making sure that when we come over here it only gives us the save data of the actual game itself the actual json object itself of all our game data okay well, with that that is the only thing i touched off screen uh let's dive back into this so really quickly uh, so now we have officially saved to the database. Ladies and gentlemen, pat yourselves on the back. We, we got somewhere. Um, now let's figure out how we're going to load it. So this is going to require a little bit more inside knowledge um, of my system. So let me, let's figure out a good place to load the game first. So right now, when we come over to our game, what we want to do is, as soon as we log in, so, you know, we put in our username and password, when we hit the connect button, we want to be able to say, hey, check our database, and instead of starting just a brand new game every single time, if we have something in the database, load from the database. Uh, so first things first, let's come in here, and I should probably start up my server. So let's start up our server real quick. Woo, 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 woo. Ah, blah, blah. ah, there we go. Alright, where are we here? Let's go into our server. Let's start our server. Alright. Now let's come back in here. I wonder what? Let's not come back in here. Let's, uh... Let's give ourselves... Let's pick someone else. Okay, let's give ourselves some gold. Something that just distinguishes that we, um, when we save, we have extra of something. Let's give ourselves a couple potions as well. Okay, so, if we run the game, and I sign in as user A, and I come over here, hit this a few times, I got some gold. We come over here to save our game. Okay, and actually, um, if we come over here, yep, save to cloud worked perfectly fine. Okay, cool, cool. So that updated in our database. Let me just make sure nothing broke. Nothing broke for right now. Cool, our save data is now officially there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out how to load that. So I'm just gonna quit out of this because the, the data itself isn't gonna change. So now we just need a way to load it. So like I said, this requires a little bit of inside knowledge of my system, but what we're going to do is we're gonna actually take a look at the main core and the login core. So in my main core, I actually, um, built a function specifically to connect sockets after we log in, uh, which I think might help us in this particular situation. So really quick, if we go into our login core, uh, and uh, this documentation I put right here, this runs after logging in alias your own socket event, similar to how you would add a plugin command. So anyone who has built um, RPG Maker plugins should understand how you would add plugin commands that you want custom built. You don't overwrite the plugin command um, function, you alias it and put in your own, you know, arguments on top of it. So it, much in the similar uh, vein, we can actually use this to run our own, uh, so pass the original uh, method, let it run all its stuff, and then we can put in our custom logic on top of that. So if we look in our online core, it runs right after, so display info, post. So this is our, you know, we're posting to our game game server slash login with our username and password. And when we are done, we get data if there's an error or if it's like, no, we don't want you. Uh, but if it is, 
connect socket after login. So fade out go to scene map. So if we technically load the game right here, it should work. I am pretty positive on this. So let's figure out how to load this thing. Uh, data manager load game without rescue. This save file ID. Um, is this going to work? Let's copy this real quick. I want to take this over into our cloud save. And I also want to take... Uh, save manager dot load. Because that's where we're actually getting the JSON file. Okay, so if we come into our managers... Go to save manager dot load... Uh, load from local file would probably be more appropriate. Alright, so we're going to copy this. That's load from local file, and uh, we're also going to take the load. Um, let's take this as well. Okay, I think we have everything that we need to make this. Okay, so here's what's happening. We're running this, we're going to try to run this data manager load game without rescue for this save file ID. Um, for us, for our purposes, we are actually going to overwrite the load game without rescue because we're not using the traditional load game. However, I just want to make sure, let me just make sure on this. Uh, so save file ID, global info. Um, we're going to have to get rid of, is this game file save ID because we're not technically looking for an exact game file. So we're gonna get rid of that, get rid of this, and we'll get rid of this logic and this logic. Um, so pretty much we're gonna try to, actually we can do this very well. Uh, so we can do a get request, and if for some reason something errors out, we can actually uh, return false instead of returning true. So that's kind of a cool way to do it. I'm not gonna do that right on screen because I don't know right off the top of my head jQuery error object, uh, but actually, hold on. When in doubt, ask Google. jQuery request error handling. Let's see what we got here. Error response function. You do the Ajax, but there is a dot fail function. Here's where we go. Okay. All right, so there's a dot fail function on top of right after the that function. Okay. All right, that's fair enough. We can do that. All right, so we can return this false uh, just, just in case like they're not connected to the database or something along those lines. We can make it so that it doesn't work. So just so you're seeing what I'm seeing, okay? Uh, this is past jQuery 1.5, which we are way past jQuery 1.5 on this. Um, so the dot fail function um, says, hey, if it fails, give us, you know, this is running an alert of whoops, which we're not going to do. We're just going to handle it, you know, return false, you know, maybe put an error message on the screen saying, hey, you're not connected to the internet or something along those lines. Actually, we could do an alert. You're not connected to the internet and then have them sign in again or something to that effect. Uh, but for right now, uh, let us figure out. Okay, so global info. Uh, JSON comes from the storage manager dot load function. This load function says, is it web or is it local? So we're going to assume that it's local. Uh, so actually, we're going to have to get rid of all this logic because it's not going to matter because it's coming from the server. So really what we need is this data. So this, th uh, we don't need this we don't need this we don't need this we do need this return decompress from base 64 and this is returning as well so this storage manager dot load needs to return this this is a biggie 
Okay, so we need the data from our base64 encoding. So we so this data, okay, so we're gonna copy this. Okay, and if we're returning the decompressed basic from base64 from our so now instead of a post, um, we're gonna do a get. Okay, and it's gonna be very similar to this. So we're gonna copy this. Uh, so game network server URL, so uh, localhost port 8000 cloud save. And instead of save to cloud, let's go load from cloud. Okay, and it requires a callback function. And we'll take a data object here. And actually, we can just pop this. Uh, we can just pop this right in here. Oh, sorry about that. Smacking the microphone around. Give me a second. Um, let me just see if that works. Okay, so what we're doing here, for those of you who are not understanding exactly what's going on, we are taking this, we are telling our server, hey, get us from load from cloud, um, and the data that we get back, we are going to return it to this data manager load without rescue, because it's our original JSON. We're gonna decompress the data that we get back from base64 into the original JSON. Okay, so this is a little convoluted, but we are overwriting the storage manager.load. So extract game contents, because we're doing save file ID. Um, we don't technically need to, the save file ID is irrelevant at this point, because we're not doing anything with it. Create game objects. Um, yeah, that shouldn't matter. Uh, return true, you know, and, and right here, this return, uh, so we can do like a dot fail somewhere right here. And instead of returning the decompressed base 64, we can like return something like zero or fail and then have it check somewhere up here. Um, you know, so, so let's, let, let's do that out real quick. Dot fail. Is that the way I do this? Hold on. Oh, done, and it's called that function. Okay, so fail function. Okay, and dot fail function, we are going to return fail. Okay, so up here, we can say a storage manager dot load. So right here, Storage manager dot load say file ID. So if JSON if JSON equals to fail. Now uh, when right now I'm just gonna do window dollar fail. Which will just pop up a pop-up screen saying uh, Uh, and let's do cloud save failed. Okay. All right. So if JSON is equal to fail, so once again, if this get fails in any way, shape or form, so the, the way that it can fail, I uh, can actually fail in quite a number of ways. Uh, one of the biggest ways is you're not connected to the internet or your server's down or something along those lines. No app will go away. Um, so something along those lines, uh, it might fail. So we can handle it over here by saying, hey, cloud save failed. And then, you know, kick them back or do whatever. Right now, I just did this so that just in case it does fail, we have a way to handle it. Okay, um, let's see what we got here. Cloud load from cloud. So we have this router route. Wow, router dot post save to cloud. Uh, so let's do a 
get request. So up here it was a post request, down here it's a get request. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar with, I didn't go over this before, but for those of you who are not familiar with um, REST APIs, uh, that, that, that's essentially what we're doing here. I would highly suggest uh, looking it up. Uh, there's also, um, it's, it's only a few things that you gotta learn, you know, get, put, post, delete. Um, but it's different things that you can do here, and they each have their own their own purposes. Uh, post is is primarily used for like just posting data to something without necessarily getting back data. Whereas a get request is more of you're going to the server specifically to get back data, if that makes sense. And then there's once again there's there's specific functions for database, um, and you can read up all about that. Uh, nowadays, it's very flexible on what you use. You can do everything through get requests if you really know what you're doing. But technically, you you should know what each of them are and do, and that is well beyond the scope of this video.